Fragile X syndrome is an inherited genetic condition which is most commonly associated with developmental delay and intellectual disability. It affects about one in 4,000 men and about one in six to one in 8,000 females. Clinically, it presents in quite a wide range. Women are almost always less affected than men. Uh, most men will have some form of intellectual disability. Other things that are quite common are autism and attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. The genetic test for Fragile X should be done in pretty much all children in whom there's a developmental delay. Rowan, at his 30-month checkup, was told by his health visitor that he um, was delayed with his speech and with his motor skills, so we were referred to a paediatrician. The paediatrician wanted to take some bloods from Rowan, um, but we weren't actually too sure what the bloods were for. Um, a further sort of six months later, so about a year after his 30 month check, um, we were actually given the diagnosis of fragile X. Although he was reaching milestones, he was just reaching them. And his speech was not what I would consider as being appropri appropriate for his age. We were very fortunate in that we had a GP who knew the family situation well, or, or knew some of the members very well, and I think believed Fiona that she wasn't just a neurotic, paranoid mother. The health visitor told us that Ron had Fragile X. She didn't know what Fragile X was. We didn't know what Fragile X was. So it was very emotional. And we just were left with lots of questions, um, but no one had any answers for us at that time. The consultant rang us up and said, could she come and visit us at home? And she came to the home uh, and told us we knew it wasn't going to be good news. Consultant doesn't come to your, your home to give you good news. Uh, and she was great. She, she was very clear, said, this is the condition your son has. Making a diagnosis of Fragile X is really important. Um, there's a number of reasons for that. The first one, and probably the most obvious one, is that this is an inherited disorder. So if you have a child with Fragile X, then there is a chance that if you have another child that may also have Fragile X. Uh, similarly, some of your relatives, if they carry the gene, then they are also potentially likely to have a child with Fragile X. I have four children, two of whom have Fragile X. The oldest, who is now 31, was diagnosed when he was six. The youngest, who is 25, was diagnosed when he was about two or three months. Alistair was diagnosed when I was eight and a half months pregnant with Chloe. So blood was taken from the umbilical cord as I gave birth and the results came through when she was four weeks old, confirming that she had a full, full mutated fragile X gene. We've been able to find out um, if sisters, cousins, aunts um, are affected as well. It's actually really important just to have a diagnosis. You know, I think we often as clinicians undervalue how important it is for families just to know what's caused the condition that, that their child has. That also just allows access to support services, organisations like the Fragile X Society, who are really good support for families in the UK. As a mother, it's really helpful to understand that my child has got delays, but it's because of a specific diagnosis that he has. It then gives a reason for his behaviours, that it wasn't just him, and it wasn't just us. There was a significant time of coming to terms with it. There was also the, the positives to it, that you had a reason. There was a reason why Jamie was behaving the way he was, why his um, developmental goalposts were not being met. The supports that were useful were the fact that I had a diagnosis. So when you go to the school or the nursery, the fact that you can tell them what's wrong, they are more able to give you support. At the time it felt like you'd more, not been abandoned, but there was a lack of information. But actually, what would a, you know, a psychiatrist, what would a geneticist been able to say to you? And actually, I think it's very, very little. Um, it, it's more getting the support from people like Fragile X, and that's more around other families that have had similar experiences. A charity that was able to help us was the Fragile X Society. Um, they have just sort of become a little bit like family. It's the only way to describe it. To me, it would always come back to the Fragile X Society. I, I think they did a, just a fantastic job of providing support, um, providing information. A lot of the help that I've received up in Scotland has been from Sandra. 
She has always been there for us. Um, if there's anything that we have to do or any little worries or queries, sometimes she just she just emails to see how we're getting on, which is lovely. Um, but she also holds. Um, a uh, meeting um, every other month um, which families can go to. Um, I've met a lot of people um, who have got um, other children that have um, fragile X um, and they've been a big help for me as well actually um, because their children are either the same age as, as my son or a lot older. So it's great to be able to get information about maybe what the future might hold as well as other children round about um, Rowan's age. Genetic counselling is a service that provides information, support and advice to families with an inherited condition. When you newly um, hear about Fragile X and your child has been diagnosed, you're bombarded with information. In a genetic service, you've got an appointment of 45 minutes in a very relaxed environment. We can really go through the expressions that are there. We can also um, see what kind of help you need maybe in accessing information from other sources, or we can say, we can give support when you want to um, contact family members. For many people, once they have had a diagnosis with Fragile X, they wonder how, how it would affect them and um, what implications this will have for themselves and the family. And again, we'll be there at hands to give you easy explanations and help you, and help you with possible choices before pregnancy and maybe when you're pregnant. You're coming to terms with a very huge change um because you've discovered your child has, has Fragile X Syndrome. Um, as all I can say is 14 years on from the diagnosis for our younger son, I wouldn't change a thing. Um, he's, he's a lovely boy, uh, you know, I love him being part of the family. He's, he's certainly um, made myself and my wife, Fiona, a much better person or much better people. Take the information on Fragile X Syndrome when you're ready. We found it very useful. I wasn't prepared at the time to receive and be bombarded with details and statistics and Fragile X Syndrome and how it was going to affect everybody and so on. That wasn't useful. We needed to get to ourselves together as a family and then find out more about it by watching our son and daughter and then when we were ready to get the information and to get validated information it was very useful to be able to pick up the phone and have some at the end of a phone. That was to the Fragile X Society. It is very hard. The first few years, uh, it's just unbelievably difficult, but you've, you've got to stick in there um, and, and realise other people have gone through this, um, gone down this road. Get everything you can, get all the support you can and use it. I've only recently um, received my diagnosis for my son. It's been a year and a half. And my message to anybody who is receiving a diagnosis, is in the process of finding out what Fragile X is, would be open up. Um, don't keep it all in. That's something that I found really hard. I wanted to battle it myself. But please don't, because there are so many people out there that really want to help. Um, you do feel alone, but you're not, you're really not alone. And um, I think, uh, sorry, <laughs> I just think that Fragile X Society can help, um, you know, oh, schools can help, nurseries can help. There are people who want to help you um, and let family and friends know Try and get support for you as well as finding the support for um, your son or your daughter or your family member who's received a Fragile X diagnosis um, because you don't want to bottle these feelings up. You've just got to weather the tantrums and it's the tantrums in particular that, that you will find the most difficult because um, people want to, especially in public places, people want to give you all sorts of well-meaning advice and they just don't know what they're talking about. They, they are lovely children to have. Uh, you know, the, the Fragile X kids I've met have just been great fun. 
Uh, they're just a wee bit different. Accept it and make the most of it. Thank you.